everyone, and I hope you're all having a fabulous morning this morning. Um, I am just going to share my screen. I'm not too sure if um, anyone is on, um, but if you are, just um, pop a hello or an emoji in the bottom of the um, in the comments. So I know another way is I might just open Facebook and um, I'm not too sure if that's going to work, but I will give it a go. It's all about trialing and um, seeing what actually uh, works here. So I think that we might be okay. Hi, Tara. How are you, my lovely? Thank you so much for joining me. Um, okay, so I've got a couple of people watching, so that's fabulous. So if you are um, watching later on, if, I would love for you to be, uh, do hashtag replay so that I can see who's watched it and, um, you know, whether the we can see what the best times are. You know, 10 o'clock might not be the best time to present my styling insights to the group. There might be a, another time that um, more people are available to actually jump on live and um, watch me when I'm presenting. So... Let me get rid of those. Okay, let's do it. So today I want to talk to you about do's and don'ts of interior styling. So there are so many different do's and don'ts, but these are my takes on um, do's and don'ts of interior styling. We, we all, you know, at the end of the day, we do what best suits our needs, wants and desires, but um, I would love to share with you my ones. So Let's start. First, plan your spaces by starting from the largest furniture item. So that's going to be your couches, your large units, your wardrobes, your um, dining room, table and chairs. So if we just sort of focus on those ones first, and then that way we can actually create the rest of our space around those because they're the bigger items. So we need to have them more as a focus point um, and then just do the um, extra touches afterwards. Next one is choose your colour palette carefully. Take your time and try colours before your final decision. So as you know, there are so many different colours out there, um, especially when you go to Bunnings and you're looking at all the colour palettes that are there. Um, it can become quite overwhelming. So um, one way that I actually do it is I will just sort of just stand there in front of the colour palettes and just see what my heart is drawing me to because at the end of the day, it's about creating an emotional connection with your home and colours um, are a big thing um, around mood and how they uh, reflect our mood too. So you just need to be very mindful of that, that the colours that we're going to put in your space, you want to be able to put colours there that are going to, for example, like blues and greens are more relaxing, they're tranquil colours, they're, they're peaceful colours. So that if you're looking to create that space, they're the colours that you need to sort of um, put into your home so that you're creating that mood um, you know in my office I just have white walls but up the top around my um, my top I'm going to call it skirting board um, is red because it's an uplifting color it, you want your energy to be um, like in the office I want my energy to be up because I'm in here for a best part of the day and I just need to you know have some things that are surrounding me that are going to uplift that. So um, also when you're trying, try colours before your final decision. So we can go to a hardware store, we can go to Bunnings or where, whatever um, you have um, in your part of the world and get sample pots. So, you know, get a couple of different shades of that colour that you like or if you, you're not too sure of whether you want a blue or you want a green or you want, um, you know, a grey, get those colour pots and then just choose a part on the wall and just do a couple of little square test patches. Now, I would also recommend that you have these test patches if you're going to be painting um, your whole house in this colour put those test patches in various rooms as well because the light is going to reflect um, 
differently in certain places of your home because you know some might have a lot of natural lighting so it's going to reflect a different color to what maybe a artificial light is going to reflect on that color um, especially in the uh, mornings or at night time as well so just sort of sit with your decision sit sorry not your decision sit with those colors I would say for at least a week so that you're able to you know you're seeing those colors for a longer time and you're able to sort of have a more, um, it will have more impact on your decision. Be brave, be different. Don't be afraid to include unusual items into your room's design. Adding something quirky that you love will personalize your space because at the end of the day, it is about creating your space that is going to um, benefit you it's a, um, it's a uh, representation of you. It's your home. So you reflect into your home as well. Um, so, yeah, go. Don't be afraid to put something in your home that's a bit quirky because, you know, it's once again creating that emotional connection with your home. So creating that mood that you want to feel within your home. Only buy furniture and accessories that you really love. So... A lot of us go out on impulse buying because, oh my gosh, that is beautiful. Oh, I really want that. So is that in your, um, your styling theme? Is it in your color palette? Is it, um, because I know a lot of my clients, they will go out and buy things on impulse because they think that it will go with their style or their theme or their color. And then they get it home and it doesn't and they don't like it. So um, you just really got to be absolutely 100% that you are loving it. You've got to have it. So, yeah, be, um, you know, just make sure because, we, you know, it comes down to the budget as well. We don't want to go out and buy unnecessary um, items for our home um, that we can't afford, but then, you know, we're stuck with them. So choose carefully. I'll just check and see if there are any comments here. Oh, Tara. Okay. Um, love this. Change our moods, change the colour. Absolutely. I see that you got EG seasonal. Yes, change it up. We don't have to, you know, especially with changing from, you know, like summer or spring to winter, the colours are actually changing with um, the season. So, if you want to, you don't, you know, you can go in and change your throw cushions on your lounge or your doona cover or your, you know, your uh, throw rug. Just those small little details um, with the changes with the season um, can have a huge impact on your mood as well. So keeping in line with the seasons and introducing those colours, but still within reason and within your, your theme and your colour palette and your style so perfect and lighting changes everything absolutely um you don't you know i don't have much um natural light coming in from um my one single office window so obviously i've got a really good globe in my um fluoro up the top i have a light ring as well so that's going to inject a lot more um lighting but it's only artificial lighting. The more natural lighting we can get in, the better our space looks, the better we feel. Because you know what you feel like when you're outside there, outdoors, and you're in the sunshine, you've got that glow. So we want to bring that inside as well. Okay, next one is to, um, to add light. So including a lot of mirrors um, to your space as well. Also, um, you can place mirrors opposite windows to reflect natural light to um, come into the room. So mirrors do have a huge impact on um, ref in reflecting that um, natural lighting into our space as well. So it's just about positioning and getting that mirror in the correct position that it is going to um, come off and reflect. Uh, okay. Hey, what are we up to? Oh my goodness, more. Um, what's this one? Oh no, that's not what I want. Sorry, guys. 
No, we've already done that one, haven't we? I don't know what's happening. Let me go through. See, technology, it just, it happens to us. So we're gonna move on to the don'ts. I think I did have some more um, do's there. So I will have to go back and just actually watch the replay to see what actually happened because um, yeah, technology isn't um, user friendly sometimes, but it's such a great powerful tool to get across, put visuals for you know you guys to actually see so that you can actually, because when I have visuals in front of me and learning like this, you're able to take in um, all the, the information that's coming in. Okay, let's start with don't. So um, don't be afraid to add some pieces that don't match your current style. There is always a way to blend different styles. So. There are so many different interior styles out there and we all, you know, at the end of the day, you may think you've only got one interior style, but I could most probably guarantee that you have a couple of interior styles within your, um, your space. So they're going to be different elements um, that are in your, um, your space that will be different styles. So, you know, um, blend like blending you've got like um scandinavian and bohemian they are a great combo um you've got um you could do modern and i would say being modern and maybe contemporary so you can actually look at those different styles and just see um in your home whether that's what's happening and um it, it's just amazing how you can actually blend different styles together and have um, create a beautiful space. So don't forget the measuring tape and measure everything several times. So this is so important because how many times have you gone and purchased um, say a couch or um, even a fridge um, and you've gone to put it into the space, get it through the door and you can't get it in there because it's stuck. There's no room, you can't maneuver it in or anything. So it is so important that you actually measure um, everything, um, the spaces beforehand and take your tape measure with you when you go to the shop to measure what your lounge um, suite's gonna be or measure what your, um, your fridge is going to be to make sure and triple check that it is going to fit into your doorway or into the space that you want to um, you know do a little plan uh, of your living room or your kitchen um, whatever space you're actually going to be putting these more or less bigger items into there to sort of really position it and see whether it's going to work as well because if you get a lounge suite, we know how big they are, and then you're putting it into your room, you've measured it, and you think that it looks okay, but it might, so it might not. So you need to allow for um, slight adjustments too. Don't rush it, take your time. We don't have to, you know, make sure that you've got a plan set in place so that you, you aren't rushing it. You've got a plan that's well thought out, You've got everything, write it down, do a mood board, create it so that you can visually see it and how it's actually going to come to fruition as well. And sorry, as they say, Rome wasn't built in a day and your home doesn't have to be designed in a day either. So yeah, very important to take your time because you want to set it up that's going to, you know, it's going to last you a lifetime, not a season. Um, don't paint everything white. We don't need to have all the walls white. We don't. So, you know, be a bit creative. Um, you can do a, a block wall, so, or a split wall where you've got, um, you know, maybe the white or an off white or a, a gray. And then, you know, halfway down the wall, you've got another, a color that's going to fit into your um, color scheme, your color palette. Um, that's quite effective. Do um, feature walls. So you could do a feature wall with paint, like have that one solid colour um, that incorporates into your um, colour palette. You could do wallpaper. Wallpaper is a huge thing, huge thing at the moment. It's coming back into trend. You know, we were all back many years ago pulling down the wallpaper because it wasn't pretty, it was ugly. 
There are so many beautiful um, prints out there now. Um, so even trial that. And once again, just when you're trialing, make sure you leave it there for at least a week so you're able to visually see what it's going to look like as well. Don't be afraid to invest in one great um, quality piece. Find a few uh, key pieces and work around them. So, you know, our most probably our biggest investment usually is the lounge or maybe the dining room table and chairs. So, um, yeah, don't be afraid to invest in something um, that's than what you would usually either because you, these bigger items are items that you want to just sort of just buy one off and that's it. So, um, you know, spending that money to start with is going to, um, your furniture pieces aren't going to deteriorate. You're going to have quality. So think about that as well. Okay. Don't neglect the small details. So, um, the small details are like your, your soft furnishing, your, um, if you're doing your kitchen, um, doing the handles, you know, they're, they're the little details that we need to um, tweak as well. So I was looking at a Facebook page the other day and there was an image there of um, just a normal white um, light switch. And then she put next to it this, it was a gold light switch. It had fancy um, switches on it. And it was just th that small detail that gave the room the wow factor as well. So um, especially in a kitchen, the, the, um, the handles and that is like jewelry for your kitchen. So dress your kitchen up. Um, yeah, don't, don't neglect the small details. Um, oops, sorry, going back too far. Um, don't um, ignore storage options as well. Make sure that you know what you need to have around every day and also find the right place or item of furniture in which to store everything efficiently. So, you know, storage is a huge thing. Um, I know that there are small homes or small units out there that we can't um, have much of a storage, but think of your options. So under your bed, there's so you can put, um, you know, there's beautiful baskets, there's containers, all those things. So you can actually, um, um, yeah, think of it. So in your bedroom, you could have a ottoman there that, or a blanket box. There's beautiful blanket boxes now that you can store things in that way. Um, so maybe in the kids toy room, um, go get some cube shelving and some um, baskets to put in there. Think of options like that. So um, that are gonna best suit you. And don't overdo the small accessories such as your throws, your pillows and your pictures. Uh, less is often more. So don't overcrowd your lounge with um, throw pillows because, you know, you just have a, I usually say on a, um, say a, a, a three-seater, we would have, you know, just two at each end and maybe um, two in the middle. We don't want to have all the cushions spread across the back of the, um, the lounge and then, you know, we're sort of shuffling the cushions around so that we can make um, space. Um, yeah, and also, you know, being less is often more is that sometimes um, a room can look too cluttered as well. So um, just de-accessorising and just having, you know, what I suppose at the end of the day, what makes you feel happy in your space too so that is it for me i hope you guys have found this valuable um i would love for you to pop in the chat what your biggest um takeaway uh from this presentation was and i would love to know if you like this type of um styling insights opposed to me just coming to you on the screen myself and having a visual there for you to actually look at as well um, because that way you can jot some points down as well. Once again, thank you so much for joining me. It has been a pleasure presenting this to you today and I shall see you next week, uh, Wednesday at 10 o'clock Australian Eastern Standard Time for another Styling Insight. Have a great day and I shall talk to you um, next week.